guys, my name is Mike Carleo, and this is my sixth installment of my Guitar Player Backpack. And today, we're going to be speaking about the bar chord. Now, what a bar actually is, is when you take your first finger and you literally put it as a bar across either all the six strings or five strings. This almost acts as our capo. So the great thing about bar chords is that we can play multiple different types of chords, whether major or minor, and we can play them laterally or vertically across the fretboard. And today we're going to be speaking about just the four main groups. Now there's two on the six strings and there's two on five strings. And they're pretty much just basic shapes that we already know from our open chords. And any experienced guitar player should be able to pull this out of their arsenal. When you'll get comfortable with your bar chords, you'll be able to play a lot of the songs that we can't really play with our open chords. So let's get started. When you're first making bar chords, don't be discouraged in how physically hard it actually is to make the chord. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice to be able to build up the strength and coordination to be able to make these chords. So that's my little disclaimer before we get started. Now, the six string bar chords are only two, and it's based off of the E minor and the E major shape. So right now, we're only gonna be learning the major and minor triads. So we're gonna learn the minor six string bar chord. So what I want to do first is I want to make an E minor chord, an open chord, with our third and fourth finger. So our third finger is going to be on the second fret of the A string, and then our fourth finger will be on the second fret of the D string, and make a basic E minor chord. So we usually make them with our second and third, or our first and second finger. So right now you want to get used to being able to play them with your third and fourth finger. Okay, That's the first step. Now the second step is to be able to get used to making a bar. So the bar happens with our first finger across all six strings and we're going to be fretting the first fret. Now this takes a lot of force coming back from our thumb and also our first finger obviously. So to get used to it we want to be able to just pluck out each string individually. If there's a problem note, that probably is because uh, of the grooves that we have in our fingers. Where the knuckles are, there's a little extra space because we actually need to be able to be flexible and grab things. So you want to move your, your finger up or down the neck to be able to find the sweet spot. Because there's a lot of problems when we have space and that's going to mute the strings that we want to have played. Once you get used to making the bar, move up the frets. And if you notice, it actually gets a little easier to bar when you get up because there's less tension. However, the, the frets will get smaller, so they'll make it a little harder to actually fret with our third and fourth finger. So let's go back and let's fret and bar the first fret. And we're going to take our third and fourth finger and put them on the third fret of the A and D string. Now this is going to become an F minor chord because moving up a half step is actually what the chord is. So moving up one fret will make it from E to F, so one fret up, E to F is a half step, so that makes it an F minor chord. You can tell that it's an F minor chord because your first finger is where the root is on the sixth string, and that will help you determine what the name of the chord is when you're looking around the fretboard. So if I moved up to the fifth fret, I know that A is on the fifth fret, so that would, this would be an A minor chord. So when making these chords again, you want to pluck out each string individually and make sure that all of the strings are being played. So you want to practice going up and down the fret board uh, and be able to squeeze your fingers in there when this, the frets get a little smaller. Now when making the major uh, six string chord, we're going to be using the E major shape. And if you notice, I'm using my third, fourth, and second finger instead of my second, third, and first finger. So get used to this again, playing the open chord with your third, fourth, and second finger respectively. Again, we're going to move up a half step and bar with our first finger. And now we have an F major chord. F sharp or G flat. G and so forth. And you want to be able to get used to this playing across the fretboard as well. So we have our major and our minor. Now one thing to note 
is that when I'm playing my minor chord, I have my middle finger free to do whatever it wants. So I like to utilize all of my fingers. So when I'm playing the minor chord, I like to use my second finger to help my first finger bar. Now this is especially useful when you're playing on acoustic guitar because the string gauges are a little heavier and it's also a little more tension when playing on acoustic guitar. When playing on electric guitar, it's actually pretty easy, but if I, because I created the habit, I just use it all over the place. Okay, now that's the six string bar chords, major and minor. The five string bar chord is going to be based off of the A minor and the A major open shape with a little bit of a difference. So let's fret an A minor shape with our third, fourth, and second finger respectively. One thing to note, we're only plucking the five string, so the six string, the E string, should not be heard. Okay. Now, you're gonna be used to barring because you already did the uh, six string bar chord, so we don't have to go over that again. So we're gonna move up one fret and bar the five strings. Now, how do we get this six string to be muted? All we're gonna do is we're gonna move up our first finger a little bit higher so that it's touching the, the six string so that it mutes it enough where it's not heard. So it's not much of a sound and it won't draw your ear towards that sound. Okay, so right now we moved up one half step, one fret, and now we're playing an A sharp or B flat minor chord. Move up another half step, we have B minor, C minor, and so forth. So just like our six string bar chords, our first finger can determine the root or the name of the chord. So that's the minor shape. Now the major shape. You have that. Now we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to bar with our third finger. So this is a little bit different than the other three bar chords that we just learned. Now, it's very, very, very important to not play that top E string like I just did. Now it's a little muted, that's exactly what we want. Now my fingers are a little long, so this is exactly why I don't want to play it. Um, when we're playing the bar chord, our first finger is not going to be barring, our third finger is barring. And only the middle four strings are being played. Now why is it only four and why is it not five? Well for me personally, I have um, very long fingers, so I'm actually, with this bar, that top string won't always come out for me. And so instead of making it an effort to be able to try to really stress over it, I only play the four middle strings. So even though it is a five string bar chord, I physically have uh, a little bit of a hard time doing it. So in order to counteract that, I can still play a bar chord, muted uh, all the way with our first finger and still play that same shape with our second, third and fourth finger, that major shape. So it comes out nice and smoothly. Now. When I get up to my top frets, it's a lot harder to be able to fit three fingers in there and bar. So that's why I use that bar with our third finger instead of uh, using three separate fingers. Okay, so that's the major shape. So we have a couple of options. You can bar with our third finger. You can also bar with your fourth finger if you have nice long fingers like me. And that allows me to have that top string to come out. So it matters what type of mood I'm in to either use my uh, third finger or my fourth finger. So that becomes an official five string bar chord. Or you can use on the bigger frets your second, third, and fourth finger and bar with your first finger. So this actually creates a lot of options for us as players to be able to get different types of voicings and different types of sounds. So that's the major and minor five string bar chord. So there are two ways I like to practice my bar chords, both the six string and the five string bar chords. I like to use a song called While My Guitar Gently Weeps by the Beatles. Now, you can use other songs, but this song is a little bit easier in lateral movement and also vertical movement, you, um, switching between the six string and the five strings. So this is a great song I like to get started with with my students. So we're gonna be learning the second part or the bridge of While My Guitar Gently Weeps. So it calls for an A major chord, a C sharp minor chord, an F sharp minor chord, back to a C sharp minor chord, then to a B minor chord, and then to an open E major chord. So 
We're gonna be playing the A major chord with six strings. So we're gonna move up to the fifth fret, bar, and like I said, make that extra, um, not the extra, make the E major shape. Then we're gonna move down a string and down a fret to the fourth fret, making a minor shape on the five string, which would make it a C sharp minor. And then we're gonna to move to an F sharp minor. So economically, I'm only, wanna, I'm only gonna to wanna to move down two frets instead of moving all the way up to the ninth fret to the big E string, all six strings making a minor shape. Back to a C sharp minor. And then I'm gonna move down two frets to a B minor chord on the same string. So that's an easy transition. You don't have to make any new shapes and all you have to do is move down two frets. And then an E major shape. So we're gonna be using a 4-4 strumming pattern while practicing this. happens two go-arounds. Now one thing to note is that there are two measures of B minor and two measures of E major. So that's the first song I like to use. Now a second way I like to practice is just playing a blues. And we can play this in any key um, and this will be able to help us practice our major five string shape. So we're going to be playing a major blues. So for instance let's say we're going to be playing an A major blues. So our first is going to be an A major across all six strings. And then our four chord, which is our D chord, D major, is just going to be down a string and we're going to be playing that major shape. Our five chord, which is E, will be just up two frets. Back down to our A major. So just a blues. this all across the fretboard and playing different keys and different blueses and this will allow us to be able to get used to the big frets the more tension down lower on the lower part of the neck and then the small frets and the less tension on the upper part of the neck and that's the second way I like to practice my bar chords so today I only spoke about the four basic shapes of the minor and major bar chords two of them being located on six strings and then two of them being located on the five strings now any experienced guitar player should be able to pull this out of their arsenal. This allows them to be able to play 85 to 90% of all songs across the fretboard. And this will allow us to be able to play economically, both horizontally and vertically. Now in my next installment, I'm gonna be talking about the seventh bar chords. Dominant seventh, major seventh, and minor seventh. This will add a little more color to our chords, and this will be able to allow us to play the extra 10 to 15% of songs that exist. So if you want to get to learn about me more, you can check me out at my website below, michaelcarleo.com, for more information. Thanks for checking out this installment. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.